Batman is one of, if not the, most well-known superhero of all time. Everyone on the planet knows who he is and what his story is. And they also know that he doesn't have any superpowers. Apart from his indomitable will, of course. Oh, I have one, Johnny. I never give up. But having no powers is one of Batman's key character traits, and it makes his character more relatable and more compelling, as we have to watch a normal man overcome the most overwhelming of situations. But even though he usually has no powers, he has gotten superpowers here and there over the years. He has been in comics since 1939 after all, so naturally writers are going to play around with his character in all that time. And though I have done videos in the past about the times that Batman has gotten superpowers, this video is going to go over every single time that Batman has ever gotten superpowers. Superpowers from Radiation In the TV series Batman the Brave and the Bold, there is an episode called Long Arm of the Law that focuses mainly on the hero Plastic Man. Though Batman does join Plastic Man to fight the villain Kite Man, who has a machine that constricts Plastic Man's body and basically takes away his powers, so he can not only no longer stretch, but he can't even move. Effectively, it reduces him to becoming a plastic statue. Now, this machine can also be reversed to undo this process and restore Plastic Man's powers. But it can also give a normal human being the same stretchy powers as Plastic Man. And of course, Batman is hit by the machine and gets Plastic Man's powers. Oddly enough, we never actually see Batman zap with the ray again to take away these abilities, and then Batman destroys the machine. Although to be fair, the machine is damaged and firing rays in every direction, so it is possible that Batman was hit with a ray blast when he was out of shot. Otherwise, he never actually lost these powers and just never used them again which seems to be quite unlikely, so I think it's much more likely that he was just depowered off screen. In another episode that shows the origin of Firestorm, Batman is struck by a form of radiation that splits him into three separate people, each one of these people representing a different aspect of his personality. One is his fighting skills, the other is his brains, and the third is his heart, who is a carefree and lazy Batman. I'm what's left without all that heavy personal baggage and science nerd stuff. Groovy. Which may actually be the only time ever that we have seen a carefree and lazy Batman. Now I'm not sure if this really counts as a superpower, but it is worth a mention as there is now three of him, whereas before there was of course only one. And since there are other villains and heroes who have the power to duplicate or split into different people, it kinda counts as a superpower. And the three of these Batmen are of course put together later on, although initially they don't see why they should re-merge. But when Firestorm explains to them that in order to be the best, most effective Batman, they need to have all three of their skill sets merged into one. And then the Batmans agree to return to normal. And another time the Batman is affected by radiation is in the Silver Age comics, when he is test flying a jet and he flies it through a comet's energy trail and gains super strength. Although this super strength is also killing him, he's glowing with an energy much like a supernova, and the scientists tell him that just like a supernova, this is the end of his life cycle, and when that glowing stops, he will die just like a dead sun. And so he has to seek out the only scientist on the planet who has the knowledge to reverse the process. And of course, he and Robin are able to find this scientist, who reverses the process that's happened to Batman, which both depowers Batman and also saves his life. And another time the Batman received powers in the Silver Age is when he was struck by lightning and the energy of that strike combines with the chemicals in his utility belt to make him only able to breathe underwater. Meaning that if he leaves the water he'll suffocate, much like a fish on dry land. Though luckily this is only a temporary condition and after some time his breathing returns to normal. Now this is technically a superpower as a human can't normally breathe underwater. But really, it's a bit useless for day-to-day -day living, as Batman needs a jar of water over his head at all times just to be able to walk around like normal. So it feels like Batman kind of got a weaker deal here, because quite frankly, breathing underwater, but not on land, is kind of a worthless power all around. And there is another time in the Silver Age when Batman gets superpowers. He's witnessing a scientist's two new inventions, one that can make things grow in size, and one that can make things shrink in size. And during the demonstration, a criminal comes in and tries to steal the two inventions. 
And of course, Batman tries to stop the criminal, but he is accidentally struck by one of the machines, specifically the growing machine, which makes him grow several stories high. And thanks to this distraction, the criminal is able to escape with the shrinking device, the one that Batman needs to return him to normal size. So Batman is stuck at the size of several stories high until he eventually gets the shrinking machine back. And being this size is definitely a superpower, as he has absolutely enormous amounts of strength at this size. Although it isn't very useful for day to day living and fighting crime of course. And in the TV show Justice League Action, the superheroes are fighting a horde of super intelligent apes who are attacking the United Nations building. Which is without a doubt one of the best sentences that I have ever said in my life. And during the fight, Mixius Pidalic turns up and uses his godlike fifth dimensional powers to mess around with reality. Basically for a bit of fun because he's bored. And so he jumbles up the hero's brains, putting them into each other's bodies so he can watch the ensuing chaos. And Batman's consciousness is put into Stargirl's body, who has superpowers given to her via her belt and her staff. Meaning that Batman has her powers while he is in her body, including flight, super strength, stamina, energy manipulation and enhanced speed. Though unfortunately Batman only has these powers for a short while, as they are soon put back into their normal bodies once Mixius Pidalic is defeated. And we don't really see him use much of the powers, he mainly just seems to use the super strength and the ability to fly, and the flight's not even used that much. He basically just fights how Batman normally would, but of course he's stronger. I've never relied on superpowers, Stargirl. Only skill. He becomes a god. Now this actually happens surprisingly often for a non-powered superhero, but in the comic book Trinity, Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman are cast out of their home dimension and into a lower one. This is thanks to a spell from a Gunnel of Fae, and because of this spell they lose all memory of their old lives, and this new dimension they're cast into changes them and turns them into gods, who are basically all powerful. Though they don't stay in this dimension alone forever, Eventually heroes manage to find them from their home dimension and bring them back, although they still manage to retain their god powers and defeat McGonagall the Fae. And in the Dark Side War saga, Batman took Metron's chair for his own and became the god of knowledge. The chair letting him know everything in existence and enabling him to travel anywhere in the universe, through time and through different dimensions. And after Darkseid dies and Batman is in the chair, he officially becomes the god of knowledge, knowing everything. Well, at least the chair knows everything. It's basically like having your brain connected to the internet, and Batman is able to look up anything he wants in an instant. The chair also stops him from needing to eat or sleep, and it also allows him to erase other people's memories, and it probably has quite a few other powers that have yet to be revealed. And in the Dark Knight's Metal Saga, an alternate version of Bruce Wayne becomes the God of War. Basically in this dimension, the Greek God of War Ares makes a superpower booster as a helmet, and when Ares wears this helmet he becomes incredibly powerful. And since he's already a god to begin with, this level of power is beyond imagination, and it allows him to go to war with the entire world. And eventually he does destroy most of it, and it comes down to just Ares versus Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman is able to knock the helmet off of Ares, but Bruce Wayne picks it up believing that Ares has killed Wonder Woman and wanting revenge. And when he picks it up, he is empowered with the God of War's power and he is able to defeat Ares. And since he has killed Ares and he has the helmet, he becomes the new God of War. Though of course the helmet corrupts his mind and he goes kill crazy evil, even killing Wonder Woman when it turns out she's not actually dead, because he thought she was going to take the helmet from him. And she was, but it was actually to protect him because she knew the evil that it lie inside and she wanted to save him from that fate. But either way, he is still the God of War. Magical Enhancement I've had to label this one as Enhancement because Batman's body has been imbued with magic on many occasions, and it's done some very different and very similar things. Such as the time that Batman was transformed into a genie in the comics, when criminals used a magic powder to imprison him inside the Larko lamp. And Batman becomes pretty much all powerful and invulnerable, having similar powers to the genie in the Disney film Aladdin though he mainly uses his magic to just increase his size and protect himself from being hit by bullets. But much like the genie from Aladdin, he is bound by the magical power of the Larko lamp, and he must grant his master any free wishes made of him, though after these free wishes are granted, Batman returns to being a human again. 
and though this is a weirder one, it did still happen in the comics, even if it isn't considered canon. And in an episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, the bad guys steal a magical totem from one of Batman's old martial arts instructors. And Batman wants to get it back, as he doesn't want them to use its power. But unfortunately, they are able to use it to transform themselves into powerful human-animal hybrids with enhanced senses, strength, and abilities. And because of this, Batman is outclassed by them, so he has to use the magical totem himself in order to defeat them, and he uses it to turn himself into a man-bat-batman. Basically, he's half-human, half-bat, and he has enhanced strength and senses, including echolocation and the ability to fly. And something similar actually happens in another episode, in which Merlin uses his magic to bring both Batman and Green Arrow back in time, in order to help him on a quest to save Camelot. It is the 5th century AD, the place is Britain, and I am Merlin Ambrosius. But while they are there, they fight Morgana Le Fay, who then transforms Batman into a Dark Knight, who is super tough and seemingly has super strength, though no free will of his own, as Morgana Le Fay has complete control of his mind in this state. Although later on, Merlin is able to free him from this magical power and return Batman to normal. Batman is also turned into a living bomb, following the events of the Final Crisis comic event, when Darkseid blasts Batman with his Omega Eye beams and everyone thinks that he is dead. But instead, Batman was just sent back in time, and then he slowly travels forward in time in jumps, each time gathering energy, until he is supposed to return to the present as a devastating bomb and basically kill everyone on Earth. Though thankfully the good guys were able to stop this from happening. But even so, Batman was transformed to have the superpower of being a bomb, and to have the superpower of being able to travel through time. Even though he didn't seem to have any actual conscious control over these powers, he did still have them. And to be fair, it may not actually be magic, but since Darkseid is a god, and god's powers are pretty much always considered to be magic, it seems likely that it was actually magical power that transformed Batman. And in another episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, Batman is given the entire Justice League's powers thanks to a spell cast by Dr. Fate. And so Batman absorbs all these abilities and is transformed into a monolith with godlike abilities, including insane levels of strength and energy blasts, the power of a Green Lantern, teleportation, and the magical powers of Dr. Fate. And there was also the time that Batman wore the Suit of Sorrows, which is a magical powered bat suit that was given to him by Talia al Ghul to help keep him safe from her father Ra's al Ghul and his League of Assassins. The suit enhanced Batman's skills and his strength, and is of course a protective armour, which probably makes you wonder why he doesn't just use it all the time. But the suit also rots the mind and corrupts the wearer, bringing out a person's darkest thoughts and desires even causing a famous knight from history to slaughter innocent people. And obviously Batman doesn't want to become like that, and realises that if he keeps wearing the suit of sorrows, he is only going to lose control and attack those around him, and he obviously wants to keep his ability to have rational thought. So he took this suit and he hid it in the Batcave, although it was later stolen and eventually ended up being worn by Azrael. And there is one other magical superpower that Batman seems to have all the time. In another episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, Gentleman Ghost buries Batman alive, and he uses an ancient Tibetan monk technique to astro-project his spirit out of his body. And time running out. And he can also possess the living in this state. Listen to me, you smug jerk. I'm Batman. Now, whether this is magic or not is never really explained. But to me, it seems like a magical power that Batman has just learnt. Although Batman never uses this power again after this episode, and it may be the case that it's only because he is so close to death that he's able to do it at all. So normally he may not have this power. But that being said, he could always put himself in a similar situation where he was near death, if he needed to go through walls, spy on people without being seen, or just possess someone else. Though of course on this occasion, the heroes are able to rescue Batman from the grave that he has been buried in, and his spirit returns to his body. Genetic Mutation Both DC and Marvel have a black goose symbiote that merges with humans and gives them superpowers. The Marvel version is of course owned by Sony, as it is a Spider-Man property, and Sony are actually working on a film featuring this symbiote. It's called Venom, and it basically merges with a person and gives them Spider-Man's powers. 
However, the DC version gives superpowers that are a lot stronger than this. It's called the Blackroot Symbiote, and it merges with Batman and mutates his body so that he is super strong and durable. So much so that he's able to fight Superman head on, which he does after the symbiote confuses Batman's mind and makes him think that Superman is his enemy. Now, to be fair, during this fight, Superman was actually holding back. And when he decides that Batman is a big enough threat that he just has to knock him out, he does knock him out rather easily. But even still, the power this symbiote gave him was still pretty impressive. Though them two fighting is nothing new, it's far from the first time that Superman and Batman have fought one another. And in Dark Knight's Metal, we see a host of alternate Batmen with superpowers. One of which is from a world where Superman has killed everyone on that planet except for Batman. Superman is actually taunting him for wondering why everyone else thought that he, the least powerful member of the Justice League, could ever take him down, the most powerful member of the Justice League. And then Batman shows him exactly why, as he injects himself with a doomsday virus that he has made for this eventuality. And it mutates Batman into a doomsday being, meaning he is as tough and strong as Superman. And then Batman beats the living hell out of Superman. And he also has a healing factor in this state, as he's able to regrow the arm that Superman has cut off. So it's a pretty powerful healing factor as well. And another version of Batman is female and named Bryce Wayne, who spends her life fighting the Atlanteans, who wage war on the surface world. And in order to fight them better, she mutates herself into an Atlantean human hybrid, meaning she merges human DNA with Atlantean DNA, and she becomes super tough and super strong, and can also breathe underwater. And in the show Batman the Brave and the Bold, Gorilla Grodd is attempting to turn the whole world's population into gorillas. And he does succeed in turning Batman into a gorilla, giving him super strength, or at least greater strength than normal human has and enhanced senses. This also happened in the show Justice League Unlimited, in which pretty much the same plot unfolds and Gorilla Grodd is trying to turn everyone into gorillas. And he manages to turn Lex Luthor, Superman, Wonder Woman and Batman all into gorillas giving Lex Luthor and Batman enhanced abilities. Though Superman and Wonder Woman of course already have superpowers, so it didn't really change much for them. And there was also the time that Batman was exposed to a new strain of Scarecrow's fear toxin that was mixed with Venom. This new strain didn't make a person scared, in fact it made a person completely fearless and super strong. And Batman becomes strong enough to actually hurt Superman. Though with that being said, Superman is still stronger of course, and is able to beat Batman in the fight and knock him unconscious, in order to give it time for the toxin to burn out of his system. Super Speed In an episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, the Reverse Flash manages to capture the Flash, and when Batman, Kid Flash and the Golden Age Flash travel to the future to rescue him, they find that the Reverse Flash is holding him prisoner, and captures the three of them as well. Now the Reverse Flash is draining off the Speed Force energy of the different Flashes in order to make himself more powerful. Haven't you guessed yet? Flash's power doesn't simply provide my troopers with speed, it increases my own velocity exponentially. And it also allows him to give speedster powers to his guards, using high-tech bracelets that siphon off the energy and give it to a person. And Batman steals some of these bracelets from the guards and gets super speed himself. And Batman with super speed is pretty much unstoppable. Though of course the bracelets only work with the Flashes as prisoners, having their powers siphoned off. So when they break free, they no longer work and Batman loses these powers. And in Dark Knight's Metal, we learn how an alternate Batman stole the Speed Force powers from his world's Flash and became the Red Death. Batman does this by combining his Batmobile with the cosmic treadmill that the Flash uses to travel through time much in the same way that Batman did this in the Lego Justice League movie. Batman then straps the Flash to the hood of the Batmobile and drives into the Speed Force, combining his body with the Flash's and thus gaining his superpowers. He also has the Flash in his head, with whom he has to constantly keep fighting to keep the Flash out of the driver's seat and Batman in command. And along with the Flash's normal powers, as in super speed and the ability to travel through time and through dimensions, the Red Death also has the power to generate speed force constructs in the form of bats, that have the power to age people into dust in a matter of seconds just by touching them. He becomes immortal. Since Batman has previously become a god on several occasions, he is most likely immortal in each of these god states. 
So consider the times I mentioned where Batman becomes a god to also be part of this immortality list as well. But Batman has also become an immortal without becoming a god, such as in Superman and Batman Generations. And in this storyline, Ra's al Ghul kidnaps Batman and informs him that he has made a discovery. If two people enter into a Lazarus pit at the same time, then one of them will die and the other will become immortal. And since Batman has literally no choice in this, he goes along with it. And thankfully, Ra's al Ghul dies and Batman emerges victorious, restored to his youthful prime and he is of course immortal. Well, not exactly immortal, they are actually overstating this a bit. His aging has just been slowed down, but it's been slowed down so much that Batman only ages one year for every century that passes, which means he'll live for thousands of years, which is still a pretty good lifespan and I personally wouldn't say no to that. There is also one other version of Batman that may have also become immortal. This is in the Dark Knight's Metal comic event when this alternate version of Batman becomes the murder machine. In this story, an artificial intelligence version of Alfred is made after Alfred himself dies. And this AI version of Alfred decides that the best way to protect Bruce Wayne is to kill all of Batman's rogues gallery and then to turn Bruce Wayne into a machine, much like Cyborg but with no flesh whatsoever. And since all of Batman's flesh is replaced with machinery, he could, potentially, live forever. Or he is already dead, since all of his flesh is gone. It really depends on how you look at it. And in the show Batman the Brave and the Bold, Batman is undercover in Gotham City as the criminal Matches Malone. For those who don't know, Matches Malone is an alter ego that Batman uses whenever he needs to talk to the criminal elements of Gotham City to get information for a case he's working. In this particular instance, he teams up with the Birds of Prey to get back the cloak of Nefertiti. Unfortunately, while he is undercover, he suffers a head injury and forgets being Bruce Wayne and Batman, and instead he believes that he really is Matches Malone, and so he starts acting like a criminal would. And the first thing he does is sell out his fellow heroes and reveal that they're the Birds of Prey. These ain't my bodyguards. They're the stinking Birds of Prey! And then he steals the cloak of Nefertiti from Two-Face and gains the cape's power, which is to give a person nine lives. He then goes on a crime spree throughout Gotham, dying several times, but each time being resurrected by the cloak's magical power. And though this isn't technically immortality, Batman does still have the power to come back from the dead. Only nine times to be fair, but that's still nine more times than most people get. So I think this definitely counts as a superpower, even if it's mainly the cloak that's doing all the work. When I landed, Match has died for good, but Batman is alive and well. Super Batman. Who would win the fight between Batman and Superman? A question that's been in the comics for decades. But what if Batman had Superman's powers? All that training and fighting ability with that unstoppable power would make Batman, well, unstoppable. And that's just the problem in issue 53 of the Superman Batman comic series. A magical totem takes Superman's powers away and bestows them to Batman. And at first, things are great. Superman teaches Batman how to use his powers, and Batman is able to use those powers to be criminals like never before. But that's the problem. What starts out well soon turns bad, as Batman becomes harsher and harsher with his beatdowns, in some cases practically beating criminals near to death for little to no reason. And he even beats up Catwoman and Dick Grayson when he really doesn't need to. And it becomes apparent that the transfer of powers has affected Batman's mind, and it's only getting worse. Eventually, it gets so bad that the other members of the Justice League have to step in. But since this is Super Batman, they can't stop him. He's too powerful and too well trained. He knows all of their weaknesses and all of their limitations. But thankfully, Superman is able to get hold of the totem that took his powers away in the first place. And he then gets close enough to Batman that the totem drains Batman of his abilities and then gives them back to Superman. A similar story to this happened in Batman the Brave and the Bold. Well, I say similar, basically Batman has the same powers as Superman in the episode. He goes to an alien planet and is exposed to an element in the atmosphere called Rodon that gives him the same powers as Superman. With Rodon in the atmosphere, someone from Earth would have incredible power on Zeradar. Also a great weakness. It's kind of a parallel to the normal Superman story, as Batman is an alien from another world who gets godlike power because of the planet's conditions being different to his home planet, just like Superman and Earth's Yellow Sun. What's your story? Just a friend visiting from out of town, miss. 
Sadly, the bad guy is able to figure this out and comes up with a cure that stops the Rodon from affecting Batman and Batman loses his superpowers. Weak as a kitten. It's actually quite a good episode, especially if you're a fan of the Timverse, as it takes heavily from Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series, going so far as to have the same voice actors in the show. He's incredible. Hit a stabilizer coil. Lucky shot. And another time the Batman has gained Superman's powers is when he accidentally triggers a trap left by an ancient sorcerer. The trap was left by the sorcerer for one of his enemies, but unfortunately he died before he could use it. So now, 800 years later, Batman sets the trap off. And this trap involves magic that convinces Batman that he'll die unless he fights a dragon. So Superman hits him with a ray that gives him superpowers for a day and makes his bat suit invulnerable, thus allowing him to actually fight a dragon in one-on-one -on -one combat. So Superman flies into space and manages to find a dragon and then brings it down for Batman to fight. With these new powers, he beats the dragon with relative ease. But after he defeats the dragon, the second part of the spell kicks in, and Batman must do what anyone asks of him for one hour. And this ends up with Batman being asked to fight City Hall. So he goes to the City Hall building and fights it in a boxing match, nearly knocking over the building. And then after this part of the programming is done, the third part kicks in, where he has to fight the world's strongest man, which is of course Superman. But since Batman has Superman's powers, he is able to beat him. And thankfully, that is the end of the spell he is under, and he returns to his normal state of mind. And he just has to wait for the powers to fade away, as they're only going to last for one day. Now, the full extent of these powers is not really shown, but from what we see of the super strength, the flight, and the invulnerability, he pretty much seems to have Superman's powers. Although this actually makes no sense. After all, if Superman has a ray that can give anyone superpowers, why doesn't he use it more often for his non-powered superhero friends in the Justice League? But of course, this is the Silver Age comics, so logic doesn't really apply to them. They were a pretty nuts time in comic book history. Vampire Batman In Elseworld stories, and of course in the film Batman vs Dracula, and even in the TV series Batman the Brave and the Bold, Batman finds himself bitten by a Nosferatu and is infected with vampire venom and becomes one of the unholy bloodsuckers of the night. Aquaman! Of course, when this usually happens, he doesn't actually become a full vampire, often stopping himself from feeding on human blood and then being able to find a cure for this affliction. But it is one superpower that happens quite a lot, probably because Batman being a vampire is just absolutely perfect for his character, especially when he's fighting Dracula, because who doesn't want to see Batman fighting Dracula? As a vampire, Batman has super speed, strength and durability. The only downside, of course, is that he can't go out during the day, but since Batman rarely ever goes out during the day anyway, it's not really that big a problem. And of course, the other problem is that he needs to drain people of their blood to stay alive. Hence why he finds a cure for his vampirism in most cases. But being a vampire definitely counts as having a superpower. I'm the Batman. And you're dust. Super Strength Super Strength is one of the oldest and most basic of superpowers, as it gives a person the edge to beat up pretty much anyone in a fight. And Batman decides to get that edge in taking down the bad guys, because he decides that being a normal guy is just not enough to take down Gotham's villains. So when he decides that working out normally is not making him strong enough, he does what anyone else would do. He shoots himself full of steroids. The responsible thing to do, I'm sure you'll agree. You'll leave me no choice, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> Batman is able to get hold of a drug that supposedly will make a person super strong, and it does just that, giving him super strength and makes him able to take down criminals like never before. However, like most drugs, he becomes dependent on it as he has to keep taking it, and he gets withdrawal and crazy mood swings from it. It's all making him lose control and being unnecessarily violent, and so he comes off the drug cold turkey and spends some time alone in the Batcave recovering from withdrawal. It's later revealed that the drug he was using was actually an early version of Venom, 
and after this the drug then gets into the hands of Bane, who uses this power to become super strong and to break Batman's spine. And this isn't the only time Batman has had super strength. In the Injustice video game series, he uses pills to enhance his strength. It's a durability enhancer. 5U93R. How can a pill allow... Kryptonian nanotech. Increases the tensile strength of bone and tissue by several thousand percent. The pills make a person super strong and super tough, strong enough to fight Superman, though not stronger than Superman. And it seems to be permanent, at least in the video game. Though in the comic book tie-in series to the video game, the pills have to be taken regularly as they only work for a short period of time and then they wear off. So maybe he does take more of the pills in the video game, but we never really see it. The Man-Bat Mutation after the tragic death of his son, Damian Wayne, Batman went after his murderer to get revenge. His opponent was of course Heretic, a clone of Damian Wayne who was genetically engineered to adulthood and to be stronger than Damian Wayne would be in peak physical condition. Basically, the Heretic was stronger than Batman and the Heretic was also either just as skilled as Batman is or even more skilled than Batman is. It's not made that clear. So in order to give himself an edge so that he can take down Heretic, Batman injects himself with the Man-Bat Serum to give him enhanced senses and strength. Like pretty much every time Batman gets superpowers, this was of course only a temporary thing, and he was later given an anti-serum to turn him back into a normal human. But thanks to the Man-Bat powers, and the fact that he was wearing an exoskeleton to increase his strength, he was able to take down Heretic and get justice for his son's murder. The Amazovirus in the Justice League comic book series, Lex Luthor is at one point joining the Justice League. Now, it sounds crazy since he's a supervillain, and it kind of is crazy, but it's actually a pretty good comic book story arc. And one of the conditions of Lex Luthor joining the team is that he shows them all his secrets, and while he and Bruce Wayne are going through his secret lab, they are attacked. An assassin is there to kill Lex Luthor, and during the fight, a virus is accidentally released, and it ends up infecting the whole city of Metropolis. It's called the Amazovirus, and if you have superpowers, it takes them away from you, and then it kills you. Most of the League are infected while saving civilians, and are very near to death. Wonder Woman is of course a god, so the virus can't affect her. And Superman is Kryptonian, so it doesn't affect him either. Batman has a suit, called the Hazbat suit, to keep him safe from infection, but it of course breaks and he is infected. And while superpowered people lose their powers when infected, normal people gain superpowers. This is why they're actually having so much trouble getting people out of the city, because they're all enjoying having superpowers. And the virus gives Batman some sort of sonic powers. He is actually blind in this state, but he is generating sound waves, and so he can see using sound waves and echolocation, just like a bat does. He can also focus these sonic waves into a weapon, and attack people with powerful sound beams. I must say though, it's kind of odd that he goes blind. It's obviously so he can be more like a bat, as bats are blind. But the thing is, that's actually a myth. In reality, bats are not blind at all. In fact, most bats actually have pretty good vision. So it just seems that the writers didn't realise that when they were making his powers. But anyway, soon after this, it's revealed that the Kryptonians can be affected by the virus. And Lex Luthor actually exposed Superman to the virus four years ago. And he was infected and apparently Lex Luthor actually designed it to take away Kryptonian's powers. But Superman's body developed antibodies against it. And using these antibodies, Lex Luthor is able to create a cure to the virus and save everyone's lives. Which would be commendable if not for the fact that he created the virus to begin with. And that is the time that Batman got Sonic powers. Now you may be wondering why I haven't mentioned any times that Batman gets a power ring. I'm not actually including those times in this video, as I've done another video with every single time that Batman has wielded a power ring, a link to which is in this video's description. And so that is every time that Batman has ever gained superpowers. Though if you can think of any other time that he's gotten super abilities that you think should have been mentioned in this video, then please let us know in the comments. Along with which one of these was your favourite superpower for Batman to have? and if there's any other super abilities that you think Batman should get in the future. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.